I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining us here, my friends, whether you are in the live studio audience or watching us back in your cabins. My name is Jason. I'm your cruise host, and this is another edition of All Access Pass, and I am sitting with, I know, I get to be a broken record. I have the best job in the world, sitting next to another absolute musical legend uh, here next to me. This man, there's not a lot he hasn't done, but we're going to dig into it a little bit. Do me a favor, Mr. Felix Cavallari. Well, great to see you, my friend. It's good to see you, brother. It's been a minute. Yeah. Uh, how, first and foremost, how you been? You been good? I've been good. I've been good. I've been healthy. I've been happy. And I'm so happy to be on board the ship. Yeah. Let me tell you. You, uh, I, I want to I ask some history questions. But before we do, I want to ask a very general question. You are always, in my experience with you, you are always upbeat. You're always positive. Mm -hmm. You always have a very strong outlook. I, I have yet to hear you uh, in a negative tone. I've yet to hear you frustrated or angry. And I know we all have those moments, but you and I have spent a fair amount of time together at this point. We've done a lot of interviews. And uh, why? How? What do you do to stay well, so, uh, you know, not pissed off? Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> well, uh, you know, we did, we did, we did our yoga class yeah. today, and, and that really helps me. You are a yoga guy. Yeah. And then the other thing is, seriously, Look, look at these faces. Look at these people out here. How could you be sad when you got people <laughs> like this that smile at you every time they see you in the hall? You know, this is a, it's, it's a blessing. And, and, and if you're aware of that, you know, you really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. I really do. It, that, yeah, for, you can clap for that. Cause yes. Lot, yeah, that's, that's all right. That's, you, I admire that. I admire when people stay true to themselves and stay humble. You, you know, it'd be easy for someone like you who has a laundry list of accomplishments, I mean, starting with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and then moving steadily down through three other Hall of Fames and all the top tens and all the number ones and on and on and on and on. It would be very easy for you to probably, you, you have every reason to be arrogant. You have every reason to be not a nice person about it, but you don't, you aren't. Well, you know, I mean, seriously, that's part of what I learned from my teacher, my guru, was humility and a lot loss of ego. But seriously, it, it is these people here that the reason I exist yeah. and on, on, on the, what do we call the musical world? I mean, so, you know, we appreciate everybody. And uh, I think, you know, uh, there's a lot of stories I could tell, but let me just sum it up to, by saying that. Uh, thank you all. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm, I'm still trying to get him to say something negative, but he never will. He just never will. Oh, I do have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> You, you, are, you are well known for having, though, a stance on peace, love, happiness, and positivity. Did that, have you always been like that, or was that when you got into yoga you found? No, I think I've always been like that. Yeah. I think that, you know, uh, uh, you know the generation that, that we come from, most of us, some of us, most of us, we really thought we were going to change the world. You know, we gave it our best shot. You know, we, uh, we obviously, well, I don't know, we, we changed something. I mean, we, we changed water beds and stuff like that, you know. But, <laughs> but, but I think health food came in when, when, when we were doing our thing. And, you know, a lot of things positive. And then, you know, I, I think, you know, not to get a little negative, but I think what happened was called drugs kind of ruined everything. You know, everybody started to get like, oh, God, I'm going to kill that guy. You know what I mean? Like, you a little know, built up. Right? Yeah. But before that, everybody's like, oh, I want to kiss that guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is fair. Yes. Okay, so let's, let's take a walk back in history a little bit. Let's, let's walk back to the early days of, of Felix. How did you get into the piano, organ, keys, et cetera? What, what, how old were you when you started, and what brought you down that path? I was five. Five years old. Yeah. And I'm not sure, like, I think my mom, you know, saw some talent. And uh, uh, I, I think it was pretty much a, a general thing where you would sign your kids up for piano lessons. Sure, you know? yeah. And so I got signed up and uh, I did three lessons a week for eight years. 
It shows. Three lessons a week for eight years. And I remember, like, <clears throat> you know, like, you know, when, uh, when uh, you know, we had a piano in our living room, you know, so, so my mom would have guests over, you know, and they'd say, oh, Felix, would you play the piano? <laughs> would you play? And I just hated that. I said, oh, God. So, you know, <clears throat> they would, they would, I'd say, all right, oh, okay, okay. You know, and I'd go start playing, and they'd start talking. As <laughs> soon as I started playing. So what I would do is I'd get softer and softer. Stop! And they realize he's not playing anymore. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I had fun. You know? Yeah, you have to. <laughs> uh, and 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 when did you realize music is what you wanted to do? Oh well, that's many years after that. Many years after that. You know, um, you know I wrote this book, which I put this. Yeah, in it's the a great book, book. You know, basically, you know, I was in college. Uh, I was actually in pre med. You know, and uh, I started a band in school. And everybody really liked the band. You know, we were doing well. We, we, we took a job uh, in the Catskill Mountains. I don't know how many of you remember Catskill oh, Mountains. Catskills. So Catskill was like the uh, celebrity cruise of, yeah. you know, <laughs> of those years. Everybody went up there. You know, like, I mean, it was uh, uh, all these hotels and comedians. Yeah. Well, I was, I was part of the house band at this place called the Raleigh. Yeah. You know, the Raleigh. Wow. How about that? And uh, again, like Celebrity Cruise, Flower Power, those people came up there and they rocked. They had a blast all summer. Well, I was the house band. In other words, we played when the guests came into the hotel. We played for the teen lounges. We played for you know the opening uh, of the uh, week, you know, as far as to show the headliners that were coming yeah. in. Well, this one band comes in called Joey D and the Starlight. Ooh. Now, little did I know that my entire planet was going to be rearranged. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and that's where it all started. And to sum it up real quickly, um, the uh, summer ended, and they went off to Europe. And what happened is their organ player quit. And they were in, in, in uh, Germany, I think, at the time. Yeah, they were in Germany. So they called up, and, and they said, would you like to join us in Europe? Prior to that, I, I had no idea that I was going to be, you know, in this business. I had no idea, you know. And uh, if you don't know the story, I can continue. But I, so what happens? They're I, not here for me, sir. I, fl I fly over to, uh, I think it was Frankfurt. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it was, uh, so we, we worked in these clubs. We started there, and then we went to Hamburg, and then we went to uh, Sweet. And there was this group that was opening up for us. They were called the Beatles. <laughs> Just a couple of punks. Just some punks. <laughs> so I walk into this place, you know, and I'm a young kid. I mean, like, I, you know, I'm like about this big, you know. And uh, everybody's screaming. Like, ah, 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 the mania. Ah. I said, what is this? Oh, that's the Beatles. The why? What, what is this? What is this Beatles? See, guys with long hair. I didn't see too many people in my life with long hair like this. And, this, and, 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 and I'm listening to the... I'm saying, what the heck is going on? Well, next year, everybody was yeah. going to know what's going on. But nobody knew. So I said... So this is early 60s. This is... This is 63. 63, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long time. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't trying to date you there, Felix. Just, just make so I said to myself, hmm, this could be fun. Maybe I should try this. But seriously, that's what happened. I, I, I just... I, I kind of like looked at what they were doing and listened to what they were doing. And I, I could do that. I know I could do that. You know what I'm saying? Little did I know they were, they were songwriting geniuses that were, you know, we didn't know that at the time because they were doing American songs. You know, they were doing like Chuck Berry. Come on, stick with the English songs. You know what I mean? Because they didn't have the same feeling that we have over here. It's called soul, baby. Excuse me, Beatles, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Peter Asher, when he introduced you last night, had a great story about hearing about you guys playing down at the scene oh, yeah. and him going down with a couple of the Beatles to check you out. Did you know they were there that night? Oh, you, oh you, when <laughs> Beatles walk in, you know they're there. You know they're <laughs> in the room, yeah. <laughs> Whether it's 63 or 2023, yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, they're real special, obviously. But that turned it, turned it around for me. Well, so 65 is the formation of the Young Rascals. 64, is that correct? 65. 64, 65. Yeah. And you guys, and I don't mean this to sound the way it's going to sound, but you had... Not immediate success, but you guys hit pretty big soon. You didn't have 20 years of toiling away before you hit. Oh, no. Good loving hitting 66. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't keep track, but all I, do. I know is look. 66. I was trying to make that look casual to feed you there, Felix, but good loving hitting 66. So 
Uh, that's when I yeah, hit. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, you guys hit pretty fast with a number Very one. Fair. Well, here was my plan. You know, since seeing these guys, these Beatle guys, I said, hmm, <laughs> how about if I put the best singers I can find, the best musicians that I can find together? And that's what I did. So we had a record deal in six months, yeah. which is pretty, pretty which is rare. Which is incredibly fast. Yeah. yeah, that's... So, you know, God was good to us, and we were good. And uh, so basically when we started out, you know, like... And then, and then I guess Good Loving came out in 66. 66. <laughs> but, I mean, it was bang, 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 too. I mean, Good Loving in 66, it's grooving in 67, and it's free in 68. I mean, that's... Bang, bang. Well, we had a really good, a, a good time. And, uh, you know, like I say, we, we had a tremendous support group there, Atlantic Records. You know, I, I can't say enough about the, uh, the facility and, and the way that they, they gave us the opportunity to uh, make music. I mean, for example, we had free studio time, which was, you know, kind of important because that's a big thing. Huge. And, and, you know, we were on Atlantic Records. We were the first white people on Atlantic Records. We were the first white group. And, and uh, you know, like, we, we, we just, all my childhood idols were walking around the halls, you know. And, such as? And such as, well, I mean, like Sam and Dave and Wilson yeah. Pickett and King Kirk. And, and Wilson used to, he used to say, get them rascals out of that studio. I want to go there and make some records. They, <laughs> they, they're sleeping there, for God's sake. As long as we were making hits, they didn't throw us out, you know. <laughs> how, did you find, how did you find the path of what is called Blue-Eyed Soul versus... Well, I'll tell you, I, you know, like I've been asked that so many, I've, I, I, I say it like this. You know, I live in Tennessee, but if I ask you about my accent, do you think I live in Tennessee? Right. <laughs> Slightly farther north. Slightly farther north. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so basically it's the same thing as, 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 your, as my accent. In other words, when I'm doing a song, I think I'm doing it like, you know, I don't know the right word to use, uh, not blue-eyed soul yeah. people. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> and it comes out, and they say, man, that's a soul for something. It's just like it's innate. You it's, know? It, well, you, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, because you know how I feel about you. You still sound incredibly soulful when you perform. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, oh. the quality of your voice is still fantastic. Well, I'm it, very fortunate with that. That's, uh, see, Italians like to scream and holler and yell. That helps. <laughs> That, that keeps you going, you know? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> right, yeah. As you know, I like, to, I like to allow our guests oh, yeah, to ask yeah, questions as we move sure. along, so I'll insert some of these as we go. Uh, Dave comes to us from Maryland. Recently, I heard an interview by Cousin Brucie with Felix in New York. Are there other influential disc jockeys you have maintained a friendship with over the course of your career? Those that are alive and here, yeah, you know, because a lot of that them, helps, yeah. They're a lot gone, yeah. You know, disc jockeys are kind of a thing of the past, you know. I mean, it's kind of shame. In the, in the old days, disc jockeys had a tremendous amount of power in which they could uh, actually play music that they liked. Yeah. Now it's a corporate decision what gets played. Sure. And uh, so the disc jockeys kind of have faded a little bit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But in the old days, we had Murray the K, you know. I don't know if you remember Murray the K, yeah, yeah. but, and we had, uh, oh, there was so many you had guys. Blavitt up in Philly. You yeah, Blavitt yeah. Philly. Got losing a lot of those guys. And, uh, yeah, and, and so I had a relationship with all these guys, you know, uh, uh, and, and unfortunately, there's not a lot of them around yeah. anymore. Debbie comes to us from Virginia. First, I have read your book. It is great. Question. Do you currently keep in touch with any of the original rascals? Dot, dot, dot. Keep in mind, I do think the new ones are amazing. Uh, well, no, uh, not really. I, of course, I keep in touch with Gene, which, as a matter of fact, I think we can announce that uh, he will be here next year with me. That's right. And, um, you know, the, the uh, well, of course, unfortunately, we lost our drummer this year, Dino. Yeah. Dino, Dino passed, you know, and uh, rest his soul. Uh, Eddie, I, I, I've always asked him to come to work. Come on, you want to go to work? Come on, man. He never really liked the word work. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get in this business to work. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, what I should have rephrased, would you like to come out and play? Mm -hmm. That's what I should have said, but I didn't think fast enough. You know? <laughs> You ruined it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jules, to what, oh, this is a great question. Jules asks, to what do you attribute the staying power of your music? Wow. Well, as I say, Atlantic put a, uh, well, the 60s put a pretty high bar up, 
You know, we had these, these gentlemen that came from England that were writing songs. You had the, you know, and then we had the Stones, and then we had the Moody Blues, and then, and the Kinks, and so, and Love and Sport. You, you want to you wanna make a hit? You, you better achieve that level. So I really think that most of us from that era have, have uh, lasted the test of time. I think that has a lot to do with it. We'll take that. Uh, Ed comes to us from Long Island. Yeah. Do you, I know there's a G there. Yeah. Do you think Ed Sullivan should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because he, he uh, where, where was the first time you saw Elvis? Sullivan, yeah. Uh, unless you saw Milton Berle. Yeah. When was the last th first time you saw the Beatles? Yeah. The Stones, the Rascals, Mamas and Papa. He did it. He did it, you know, and, and uh, you know, he, he was such a strange cat, I'll tell you, man. <laughs> he, you know, when we did those shows, we, we, uh, we, you started on, it was obviously Sunday night at 8, 8 p.m. I'm sure we all remember that. But we started Monday morning at 7 a.m. And we rehearsed for five days. And then on Saturday night, we had a complete performance in front of an audience, not televised. And then on Sunday night, he came out and screwed the whole thing up. <laughs> because he would be up here, you know, and he says, I'm here we are, you know, and he'd see somebody, and then he would get distracted. And see, now, you know, you're timed. It's, it's, it was live, you know. So now I just went 15, 20 seconds into your act. So that's what would happen. And so backstage was like a zoo. You know, I was oh, I was scrambling around. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It was really, really very, very interesting program. We were kids, you know, so it was really interesting to see that, what was going on behind the scenes that nobody ever knew. I can only imagine. Uh, Steve from Maryland, I loved your talk yesterday on yoga. Ah, do you plan on doing any more talks on yoga? Is that something you do regularly? No, I, I don't do it regularly, uh, basically, unless somebody asks me a question, I answer it. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's about it. Fair because, uh, you know, I, I don't like to preach. You know, I can just say, look, you know what? This really helped me. Helped my mental, my physical, and yeah. my spiritual sanity. And sanity is important. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's yeah, yes. It really helps. Uh, yeah. Steve read your book. He thinks it's great, by the way. Good. Thank you, Stevie. Uh, Bill, I think, it, yeah, oh, there it is, Bill Sharp. What was it like when the Rascals were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Chaotic. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the experience. Well, did, did any of you see the broadcast? Have you, ever, have you had the pleasure of looking at that? 97? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. If you haven't, Google it, because I don't have to say a word. Let me tell you. I, <laughs> what a night. Oh, what a night. You remember that? That's what it was. It was just like that. You know, uh, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you've got four alpha dogs in a room. You know, four of them, four alpha dogs. This is my plan. I was going to sign. I wanted to be with guys that were really powerful. Well, I got my wish. So when we all got together to do that, you know, we really hadn't spoken in quite a while. We hadn't been together. So all of a sudden you get thrown together to go on to. So Google it. Take a look. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> and go. Yeah, it's kind of one of those. Uh, LaVon asks, do you... <laughs> Prepare yourself. I'm ready. Do you remember the limo driver's name that took you to girls' college to perform? We met him in 2018. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes I try to figure out my middle name, you know? So, <laughs> you know... I know it's there, but... It was Larry. Hey, Larry, how you doing? Where is are you? is like, Larry God here? Bless you, Larry. Is Larry here? No, you just met Larry. So you oh, know Larry. Well, you, well, know, you know, that's a long time ago, but I'll tell you what. When Gene comes out here, I bet you he remembers. He remembers fleas. You know, he remembers everything. <laughs> <laughs> this guy he remembers <laughs> fleas. Yeah. Al comes to us from Florida. Can you tell us a bit about working with Jimmy Spheris? You produced his album. Oh, yeah. Well, uh... Jimmy's no longer with us, I yep. think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got asked to do an album with Jimmy Spears, which was quite, quite, quite different, you know. And uh, musically, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, however, if I may say, they were Scientologists. Oh, interesting. So uh, during the session, there was, this, there was this guy behind, he's going like this to the whole time. <laughs> he, he was transmitting his energy to me. <laughs> 
So, so unfortunately, I got kind of you know, weirded out. I said, okay, what can I do for you, my yeah. friend? You know? So help but me, Jimmy was you. a Scientologist. He was a good guy, man. He was good. He was, you know, he really, really wanted to make some great music. You know, I, I don't know if you ever heard that album. It wasn't a bad album, right? It was not bad. Apparently no one else has heard it, so that's fine. Um, oh, they have. Uh, you did. Carmen comes to us from Miami Beach. Is there a city that you look forward to performing in more than others, or do you like them all the same? Oh, no, they're not all the same. Come on. <laughs> you know that. You know, I mean, seriously. I mean, you know, there's certain spots in, let's say, the United States of America. Come on. We're guys from the East Coast. We go down to Miami. Come on. Come on. You fell in love. You go to yeah. Los Angeles. Come <laughs> on. You know, and then you go, okay, I'm going to go to Bismarck. I saw I me. Mean, I like that, but no I, offense to Bismarck, it, uh, if you're here, by you the way. It's, no it's okay, but you know what? It's not Miami with this. They don't wear clothes and stuff. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's too cold for it up there. Cold, yeah. exactly. Well, what yeah. in your? You've played all over the world. I mean, you've played everywhere. Just about. Is there any place that I love asking this question? Is there any place you got to that shocked you in terms of how intense the response was? Uh, intense with Tokyo. Yeah, Tokyo. Tokyo. People always say Japan. Well, you know what? Because you know, first of all. They're, they're really a, a nice people. I mean, seriously, they don't take tips. Can you imagine that? No tips in Japan. They, they just really, first of all, they appreciate you coming all that way. That's number one. And they let you know that. They, they say, you know, like, thank you for coming here. They love the music. I had this guy come up to me one time while I was working. He was like, Listen, I want to be your son. <laughs> <laughs> take me home with you. It's so cool. It's so cool. They're just really nice. They love the music, man. They, 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 they make these little uh, CD uh, packages. Yeah. Right there, you know? And they, they buy every album that yeah. come up, you know, for singing. They really, really, that's fun. A lot of artists say Japan. That's a lot of artists yeah. say Japan. Yeah. And they say it's fascinating because you walk out and it's a very stoic crowd. It's a very stoic crowd. But then once the music hits, they know every word. They remember every word. They get excited. But it starts very, really, very stoic yeah, really, in the beginning. Really, really excited. Yeah. It's an interesting place. Uh, you know, uh, one of the things about it is, you know, every clock over there is exactly the same. They are perfect on time. I mean, seriously, it's a little different from the United States. You know Just slightly different than us, yeah. Uh, Roy, who comes from Atlanta, how did you, we kind of talked about this a little bit, how did your early piano training impact your music later? Well, I was ready to go. You know, I mean, I had my uh, my ducks in a row. I knew I knew what was happening, and you know, uh, it, it's very important. A, a lot of people start, you know, without they just learn how to play, and they don't get the theory. And it, 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 the further you want to go in, in any profession or trade, is is the be the more you can educate. And and I, I'm a, I'm a strong advocate of, of education. In my case, you know, music and pre med and pre med. Yeah. Diane comes to us from Jacksonville with the advice of, quote, play more fast songs. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Are there specific hits you would associate with that advice? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, like You Better Run was fast and Good Lovin' was fast and Come On Up was fast. And, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, as you mature, you know, as you get older and you fall in love, you got a little schmaltzy here, you got a little, you know, you want to write something really sweet, you know. You don't want to do that fast. You want to take your time. Well, that's kind of the you story know, behind Groovin', yeah, right? Yeah, you want to be nice and slow, man, you know. That's that, that's that song, Slow Hand. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it, it basically, uh, you know, music, music, uh, it's, it's harder to play music slow than fast. You can get away with a lot when you Yeah, you play can hide. Fast. Yeah. But well, when, you, when you do something like, for example, we first did Mustang Sally. Mustang Sally, we did it pretty slow. A lot of people can't play slow, Lee. Yeah. It's hard, you know, because yeah. you got this thing you got to keep called time, you know. You got to keep time. Well, that's, that's roughly, the, I mean, grooving is, you, you, you've been, you're on record as saying grooving is, it's about a Sunday because, you know, the musicians work Fridays and Saturdays. Sunday's the day off, and you, there's a girl, and the... Well, no, I, I predicate it like <laughs> saying like this. I mean, musicians work on Friday and Saturday, and I've yet to find a woman that thought that was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, right? you, know, you don't like it. You so you got you to gotta show them somehow you love them. So the best thing to do is write a love song. Love songs really, I don't want to say the word work, but they work. <laughs> That's your advice. Just write a number one smash yeah, hit love go. song, and then you'll you do it every know. time. That's all it takes. A number one smash hit that's been around for 
60 years. Just, <laughs> just do that for her and she'll know. Yeah. Uh, Dan and Abby come to us from Florida. Where is Eddie and his brother? They're in New Jersey. They're Jersey. They have been in New Jersey for many moons. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, there's a follow-up from someone else. Gary, who's also from Florida, why are there so many great bands from Jersey? Well, you know... Good question. New Jersey's kind of a special, pl a special place, you know. Uh, I, I mean, seriously, uh, you know, uh, like, for example, do you remember when we used to have those CB radios? You remember those things? Oh, you know... 10-4, you know. Yeah, you, good when buddy. You, when you get into New Jersey, all of a sudden you hear like, bark, 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 bark. Oh, you're on, you just went over the bridge. I get it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know? Which exit? Yeah. That might have something to do with it. I don't know, maybe it's the water. <laughs> something is going on over that bridge, <laughs> you know. And, and Jersey is, 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 is a place where I think, you know, the... Probably a little easier to, to express yourself than, than other places. That's it might fair. be a little bit more loose. I don't really know, you know, but... Uh. Uh, Gary, who comes to us from New York. Uh, I've been a fan of you and the Hammond slash Leslie forever. Do you still use it? Do you use the Nord now? Oh, it's a musical. Oh, you know yeah, I got to apologize to the Hammond people, you know, because yeah. I've been using the Hammond for mucho años, many years. And now I want you to know that the Hammond... Stop making Hammonds, 1972. So when we get a Hammond on stage, sometimes it doesn't work too well. Yeah. Sometimes it's too big to get on the ship. They're huge. Sometimes it's... That's the speaker that you hear. So we've come up with new things. See, I always say that the chiropractors love me because I was on the Hammond. <laughs> that thing weighs 500 pounds. It's a you monster. Know? So uh, th there are new things. No, I, I only use that Nord because that's what they put in front of me this trip, you know, but uh, uh, my friend from the Ides of March, Scott, yeah. Scott is a Hammond dealer. He hasn't spoken to me since I got on board. <laughs> <laughs> he feels like you've sold out. Yeah, he's, sold yeah, he's done yeah, with you. Exactly. Rick, well, Rick comes from Jersey. Hello, Rick from Jersey. Hey, Rick. Uh, do you have other musicians in your family? Are, are any of them, did any of them ever work professionally? Uh, one of my daughters uh, is, is an excellent singer. Her name is Aria. We named her properly. And Clearly, uh, yeah. so she, she is. And, um, you know, like I say, I, I think she's got two, two children, and I think that she's better off having the kids than coming into this <laughs> wonderful business. This is a business, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, Rick also wants to know, in your travel party, how many are there? Who all do you travel with when you travel? Well, we, we travel with our musicians. We've got a bass player, a guitar player, a drummer. We've got another keyboard person, and we, ca we carry normally a sound guy and a, at least one road manager, you know, somebody to help us out to find our, you know, our room at night, you know. <laughs> which way's for and which way's aft. Yes, yeah. exactly, where you have to be. <laughs> but well, we got a pretty tight ship. We, we, yeah. uh, we, 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 we run well. And how frequently do you... How frequently do you, this is a rude question, Felix, how frequently do you reevaluate the band and how long has the current group been together? Wow, we've been together quite yeah. a while, with the exception of uh, one or two of the guys who, you know, uh, are, are, are busy, so we don't care. But we've been together like 16, 17 years, the, the, yeah. the, the three of us. And it sounds like it. Which is great, you know, I mean, I, 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 I really appreciate that because uh, you know, there's a loyalty factor that uh, I don't know if that exists anymore. You know, I mean, people jump ships and go to yeah. different jobs, but I had a great bunch of guys. Most of us live in Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, that's like a place where you know most musicians will go because there is work. You know, so I'm very lucky to have. Them. Out of curiosity, though, you came up in a time and you found your fame in a time where you really had to work to achieve it. And I don't mean to say that newer artists don't have a work ethic by any stretch of the imagination, but the work ethic was different then. You couldn't just go on YouTube and have 10 million people see you overnight. Mm -hmm. You had to work the Catskill circuit. You had to work all the circuits. You had to take the bar jobs and the gigs. Do you attribute that to some bands having a different cohesiveness in terms of... of well, you like see, the, the thing is, seriously, a, a lot of kids today, they, they, they sit with a computer and make music. Yeah. And, and you know, you know why? You, you got to know how to say hello to people. Hmm. Because uh, when you start out, they're, they're even closer than this. 
And, and if you don't have experience of how to deal with people, then you go like, oh, there's people out there. Oh, my God. You know? <laughs> and, and, and that shows on stage. Absolutely. You know? And so basically, you know, I, I mean, you, you ever hear the old guy talk about the young guys? It's so funny, you know. But These in, kids today. <laughs> but I'm telling you, seriously, you know, in the old days, if you couldn't sing, you got fired. Now they just tune you. I can make anybody sing. <laughs> it's just like, a, what do you call a word process? Can we spell anymore? We can't spell. I mean, it's like you push the button, he spells it for you. So it's very different now. Yep. However, there's a lot of good things. I mean, you know, the, the, you know, it, the internet is, 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 is can, I, can I leave a message with my, my guru message about the internet? You know, they ask, is the internet good or bad? Well, they asked my teacher, you know, Swami, uh, uh, is, uh, what, what do you think about, uh, you know, uh, I forget what it was that they asked. He said, well, let's take electricity. He says, if you've got electricity, you plug in your iron, it's good. you got electricity, you plug in your finger, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> so that's his, I mean, it's very different now. I mean, you know, you actually make music, like almost like AI, this yeah. stuff that's oh, yeah. coming up. I mean, it's going to get pretty interesting. You're going to hear songs from... Robot man, you know, I mean you're already hearing well, it's already there. There's there's performers out there that are named that aren't human Yeah, there are voices that you would attribute to oh, that's that's lady Lady so-and-so that human doesn't exist. That's a synthesized voice that one person has created an entire Soundtrack or an entire bit of music, you know the whole nine yards and and it's an AI voice that sings. So like uh, what do you call it? Alexa? Yeah. Oops, there we go. Yeah, what yeah, I, sure. I shouldn't have said Don't that. Don't say it too loud. Yeah. Don't you're going to upset <laughs> right. Siri. Um, <laughs> oh, is sorry. there somebody here? Yes, it's me. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. He doesn't know any better. <laughs> I feel half the time in my house, That's we'll, true. my wife and I'll be doing something. All of a sudden, if anyone has a, a watch or a phone from Apple, all of a sudden, they'll, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. You're like, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> Why are you listening to me? It's true. Stop it. It's really true. It freaks you out. It freaks us right out. I mean, if you have a grandparent, they go, what? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who is that voice? Uh, what? What are you called as a grandfather? What do your What do your grandkids call you? Various things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? Poppy. I'm Poppy. You're Poppy. I'm I Poppy. That. I love that. Yeah. You're Poppy. Uh, Rick from New Jersey has one last question. We kind of touched on it a little bit as well. How is Gene doing? Well, he's doing okay. You know, he's. Um, you know, as you know, he, he had a little heart attack on yeah. stage. Not a little one. He had a big one, and he's. It was 19, 2019, and he's he's up and about, and his brain is functioning. Worse than ever. I mean, you know, <laughs> so that's good, you know. So uh, he's, I, I know he's really looking forward to coming here. I, I know he's going to really it's love exciting. it. exciting. So I, I hope, you know, I'm sure you'll welcome him. You know, Are he's, you kidding me? Yeah, he's, uh, yeah. he's doing okay. Is it exciting for you? It's very exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be cool. Yeah, it's exciting. That's good. You know, we, we had a, a real camaraderie. Sure. You know, and, and it's like anything else. When, when, when you lose your friends for, for what, whatever reasons, whether it be business or, you know, health, or, you know, it's nice to get the friends back together sometimes, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if we were to go into your car or into your office or wherever right now, what music would be playing currently? Well, you know, uh, Spotify and Apple Music and stuff like that, you know, there's another example of good and bad. You know, if they'd only pay us, it would be really, yeah. <laughs> it would be really good, you know. But I, I really enjoy uh, going into uh, some of the musics from other countries. Oh. You know, I really, really enjoy it. Like, it, for example, I, I've, I, I've noticed that a lot of the English artists, they really pay attention to what's going on in African music. Oh. And I hear the influences, so I went over to like to listen, listen to like Nigerian music, and you know I'm listening to these guys, uh, Burma boy. Uh, you know, uh, it's really interesting what's going on in other countries. As a producer, yeah, are there current artists that you are impressed by? Well, yeah, but I mean, like I say, the the, the robots are pretty good. <laughs> the robots are damn good. Yeah, <laughs> they make good They're stuff. impressive. Yeah, yeah, right. There's a lot of good music out there. You know, it, it's it's almost unfortunate that a lot of it never gets heard. Yeah. Because there's just so many. You know, uh, certainly on the radio. It's, it's like TV hard. channels. There's a million of them now. It's hard, but I mean, when some something kind of surfaces and comes to the top, it's usually pretty darn good. You know, I mean, yeah. impressed with Taylor Swift. I mean, what a career this woman's had. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. I also like the fact that she stands up for things. You know, which is a lost art. 
People just shut up and let everybody do what they want now. You know, I don't like that. You know? Valid. Yeah. Uh, what is next for Felix Cavalier? What, what, when we leave the cruise, uh, you're obviously leaving us tomorrow. Yes, right? I am. I'm sorry to say I'm out of here. Yeah. And uh, that's okay. The buddy, my buddies are coming on. You do. A lot of good artists are coming. Yeah. So you guys will have a blast. Um, I just I finished an album during the COVID years, and I'm putting that out. It's called Then and Now. And uh, we're just trying to get it pressed into vinyl so that, you know, those people can get vinyl. it. Vinyl? Yeah. Yeah, very a cool, of, yeah. A lot of people like vinyl. Vinyl's coming back. It's, it's coming back. However, trying to get one pressed is not <laughs> coming back. <you> <laughs> That's know? not yet. So we've been on a little bit of delay. And then I want to do another one, and, and another one, another one. I don't want to stop making music. I, I would rather, you know, keep my brain alive by making new ideas come to life. Do you write a lot still? Yeah, so what I did with this album is I took then and now. I took five songs that influenced me. You know, and I got Ray Charles in there. I got, uh, you know, Benny King in there. And, and I re-recorded those. And I wrote five new songs to kind of show that influence. And we had Very a cool. ball because, first of all, you know, good songs are good songs. I don't yeah. care who wrote them. So we had a really good time with this. Are there songwriters that you've always looked up to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are like, you know, like, they're in that Hall of Fame over there, you know what I mean? So, so really, I mean, we just... So are you, you know that, right? I know okay, that. Okay, I'm just yeah. checking that you're... I mean, we just lost Burt Bacharach, but yeah. he and Hal David, I, I got to know Hal David, come on, how good can you get? Yeah. I mean, seriously, you know, and, and of course, my man Billy, Billy Joel. And Billy course, Joel. Uh, you know, Paul and, Paul and uh, John, and not too bad, not too shabby. Elton, how about Elton? You know, I mean, come on, these guys are phenomenal. You Ridge, know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we had uh, we had the Hollies on oh, yeah. last week, and they were talking about their early session years. And Reg <laughs> Elton was their session piano player wow. in all yeah. their early years. So it's, it's amazing how when you go back and you start to talk about artists from that era, uh, how many connections there are to people that became hugely famous yeah. later. Did you work with any artists back in the day that then became something bigger later on? Uh, well, you know, I mean, they were pretty much. Big, you know, when we yeah. got there, you know, but we, we, I, I, when I did this book, I, I, I don't think we printed it, but I did a page of all of the people that I've been on some sort of a show, television show. I was on, I was on a boat in a, in a television program with Big Crosby. How about that? <laughs> Seriously, we go back there, Andy Williams, yeah. you know, uh, oh man, we just, we just saw that all these people had television shows in those days, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and it was just really fun, you know, Perry Como, and, and then you get to the modern guys, of course, you know, uh, the kinks, and, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's really interesting, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis, yeah. and all these people, and, and uh, I, I had the pleasure, one time I did a, 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 a golden anniversary for W, uh, what was it, CBS FM, and uh, all of the 50s groups were on it, no. all of them, you know, so I was on the stage with the harp tones, the moon glows, you know, flamingos, so I, I, I really uh, enjoy the people that I grew up with. Obviously, you have a lot of musical influences. Was there someone that influenced you in terms of their stage presence and their interaction on stage? Uh, well, you know, that I really had to learn, you know, because I was yeah. mostly uh, embedded in the musical part of the world. You know, I, I didn't really... And you got to break out of that to be a performer. If you're going to jump in the front of a band, yeah. you gotta, you, you got to learn that, you know, you got to learn how to deal with human beings, you know, which is interesting. <laughs> See, I've got a machine over here. It's very nice. Yeah. I enjoyed that. But then, hey, so I like to interact with you all. You know, I feel like I know you and you feel like you know me, correct? Yeah. And that's the feeling that I try to permeate when I go on stage. And I try to tell the younger people like, like, look, these people are here to see you. There's nothing to be worried about, you know, unless you stink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then there's a lot to worry about. Then you got to yeah. worry. Yeah. <laughs> How many dates do you have this year coming up? Well, I guess we're about 15, 16 so far okay. going into you. We're slowly coming back. Yeah. You know, people are saying, is it okay for me to go yeah. out? Yes, it's okay for you to go. See, not everybody tests you before you get on the boat, yeah. you know, before you get into the club, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but I think we're going to be okay here. So, you know, we're just trying to get back into the rotation, as they say. What's an ideal uh, number of dates a year for you at this point? I like to do 30. That's a little solid amount. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to do that because, you know, by that time the bones are ready to go. You know, <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, you know, right? Go home, I mean. Yeah, know. fair enough. Right? Well, I know I speak on behalf of everyone. I say thank you so much, not only for being on this cruise, but doing this Q&A. And I mean, it's, it is, uh, 
it's thank you. It's important to me. It's it's very important to me to always acknowledge that you are not only phenomenal as a as a talent and as as a, as a performer but you are also such a good human. And that means the world to us, and I love having you with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How about this guy here? Yeah, stop it. How about Let's this guy? Let's give it up guy? for Felix Cavalier. Join us for another trip back to the 60s on the 2024 Flower Power Cruise. Our lineup features the legends of the love generation, including the Rascals, Tommy James and the Shondells, John Kay of Steppenwolf, Randy Bachman, founder of Bachman Turner Overdrive, and the guess who? The Moody Blues' John Lodge, the Family Stone, Gary Lewis and the Playboys, the Grassroots, the Buckinghams, the Box Tops, the Cow Seals, the Vogues, Cruise host Peter Asher, a spoonful of love, and more to be added. Get to know the artists at interactive events, including Q&As and panel discussions, game shows, and more. Plus, travel back to the era of bell bottoms and tie-dye during nightly theme parties under the Caribbean stars. Departing from Miami March 21st, 2024, on the luxurious Celebrity Summit, and making stops in the beautiful ports of San Juan and St. Croix. Flower Power Cruise sells out each year, so don't wait. You don't want to miss the next grooviest trip at sea.